Welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we are going to talk about five data science portfolio things or mistakes that you are doing it wrong. So I wanted to highlight five things that I've observed from going through resumes, being in interview process, having a, uh, having seen a lot of portfolios of data science aspirants and data science beginners. And I wanted to highlight what are the five mistakes or five things that I have identified that people are doing it wrong. And this video is not a coding tutorial unlike my other videos. If you want to learn programming for machine learning and data science, you can check it out my check out my other tutorials. But this tutorial is purely going to be me talking where I'm going to talk about five points that I believe that people are doing wrong in terms of data science portfolio. So what is the first thing? Let's get started with the first thing. The first thing is please do not use Titanic data set as a data set or a project in your resume. This shows that you have not tried out a lot of different data set. Why? Because Titanic is one of the most used data sets on Kaggle platform and even outside Kaggle a lot of tutorials that you see on YouTube would usually use Titanic data set. So if you are going to mention Titanic data set as one of the project, you know what? I predicted the survival rate for Titanic. I predicted this. I did EDF for Titanic. It doesn't actually show you that you went beyond the beginner stage and tried to do something with the existing data set. So showing Titanic data set is a terrible, terrible idea for your portfolio. It definitely does not add any value. In fact, I would say that if I see Titanic data set on a resume uh, or part, for, part of a data science portfolio, then I would probably judge that person that, you know, this person has never passed out of that data science learning tutorial phase because if you are actually going to take a data set and do something, that is definitely not going to be Titanic because Titanic has already sunk. We are not going to save them. Second thing, if you're going to mention the project portfolio, like a GitHub repository of the project on your resume or part of your portfolio, please make sure that it is not just an empty repository or it is not just a repository with a .ipynb file, which is a Jupyter notebook file. I see a lot of people actually mentioning GitHub, GitHub repo of the particular project. It is actually a good thing if you mention the code as well as part of your project. But you know what is bad is if that repo is not very well structured, if that GitHub repo or Kaggle notebook is poorly written code or you have just copied and pasted it from some tutorial or somebody else's Kaggle notebook. Sometimes people just fork somebody else's Kaggle notebook and mention the link. You know, all these things point to very, very bad impression of your resume or your portfolio because one of the reason why you would want to link a GitHub repository for, for somebody to see is that you want to give them that ability to recreate the project, reproduce the project. Why? Reproducibility is a big issue that has been discussed multiple times um, in data science and uh, all these aspects. So the point why you are giving code base to a, an interviewer or part of a resume, part of your portfolio is that they can go to the repository, click the repository, see how you have written the code. Have you written requirements.txt? Is your readme good enough? Is your code well written? Have you followed some design patterns when you wrote the code? This is why you want to give the repository. If your code base is so terrible, if it is just a copy and paste of somebody else's code base, if you do not even have a readme, you have not mentioned how to reproduce this analysis or a machine learning project, then showing a GitHub repository link or a Kaggle project link is a terrible, terrible idea. So this is the second point I wanted to highlight that just the, for the sake of mentioning a GitHub repo, or even for the sake of mentioning a link, please do not do that. Make sure that your code base is neat. You have got requirements.txt, you have got readme file, you have got a, like some kind of description, some kind of screenshot about what is the project. Like just if it is an empty Jupyter notebook, you know, it is not worthwhile for you to mention a GitHub repository that doesn't give a good impression for whoever is reviewing your data science portfolio. So the third thing that I wanted to highlight that we want to talk about is please do not mention just the task name as a data science project. I see a lot of people doing it. In fact, I see a lot of influencers encouraging it. Okay, five data science projects that we want to do. Data cleaning, data visualization, data preparation, data collection, data modeling. No, these are not projects. These are just different stages of tasks in data science lifecycle. In a data science life cycle, at one point you might be collecting data, at another point you might be communicating data. So this is 
this is a continuous process if you want to mention a project name please do not say you know what this project is data exploration this project is data cleaning this project is data visualization this doesn't help anybody you have to have meaningful titles for your project if everything that you have done is data cleaning then that is a part of a project that is not entire project so you should probably mention what was the entire project like for example let us say i've collected data from youtube which is available on kaggle and i've done data cleaning there before i made a visualization so now i can say that understanding how youtube videos are performing or something like this is my project title and as part of that i have spent a lot of time in data cleaning now you can add you know like that is a place where you can get into the data cleaning part but your project title should not say data cleaning your project title should not say data visualization because that doesn't make sense because data visualization data cleaning data modeling data collection all these are part of a data science life cycle um, real if you talk about it so you don't have to mention that as a project title like if you have got three projects one says data cleaning one says data modeling another says data visualization then these are necessarily not projects these are more like your coursework as part of a course or learning curriculum so it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense to tell people that you actually did data cleaning rather you have to you have to say what is the overarching theme what is the project title and then you can mention the rest of the item inside the description fourth one this this three ones the, the fourth one do not mention projects like stock market prediction these are completely impractical i mean this is highly my opinion like people might have different opinions but my opinion is i don't see a value in saying that i did stock market prediction imagine you are somebody who has done a really great stock market prediction you wouldn't apply for my job like you wouldn't apply for my company i don't have to review your resume you don't have to showcase your portfolio by this time you would be making millions of dollars or millions of rupees because you have successfully managed to predict stock market you might i mean can you even believe it you could be the next biggest hedge fund in the world if you have successfully managed to predict stock market so what is the point of stock market prediction i know it is good for educational purpose i know you can showcase your arima time series uh, using deep learning using um, um, lstm to predict stock market i know you can showcase all these programming skills and technical skills that you have got but i still believe that showing projects that are completely impractical do not help so now you might ask me hey you have a criticism i accept it stock market prediction does not sound practical to me as well so what is practical for you so now if you ask me i would say you should pick projects or you should pick data sets or you should pick domains that are relevant to you and the kind of domain that you want to get into for example let us say i want to get into e-commerce so now if i want to get into e-commerce i would go to kaggle and look for e-commerce related data set i would go to an analytics consulting website and i would see what those companies are doing in e-commerce and now i would try to combine these two i've got data set and i've got um, also the um, i've got also the project the use case that i want to cover and then i'm going to come in these two and then say this is my project for example uh, doing nlp or uh, you can say a sentiment analysis sentiment analysis is also a bad example but at least it's for the sake of discussion let's say sentiment analysis during a uh, e-commerce company's outage for example um, amazon had an outage or let's say netflix had an outage now you want to do sentiment analysis of understanding what people spoke about that outage this is a project or you can say sentiment analysis of a, or you can say predicting fake reviews on amazon now this is another use case for e-commerce or you can say um, you want to do supply chain optimization so you can find a relevant data set so these kind of projects make sense because that is practical an organization could be interested uh, for example if you are applying for amazon um, then these projects could trigger a conversation so the projects that you are going to put it should not just show your technical acumen but also should be a driving force for conversations during your interviews companies tend to select profiles where portfolio has a relevant projects for their industry for example if you want to get into healthcare let's say you are a data scientist a bio data scientist now there is no point in mentioning stock market prediction there there you should pick up data set that is relevant for your domain and do data science projects there and then showcase it because that makes sense again if you talk about stock market prediction sentiment analysis kind of product you just go online and put on google you would get 10000 code bases for doing these projects i'm not saying that you should entirely ignore this thing i'm saying that these are worthwhile doing it but you know 
what you mention on resume or something your resume is not a hotel's menu card you know hotel's menu card is going to have all the items that they have got in hotel but your resume is not that because you don't have the luxury of having such a big resume rather what you want to do is you want to show the highlight project you want to show the best of best you want to show something that can impress the recruiter and you want to show that is part of your portfolio you know you are you are recognizing that this is an impactful project and you want to mention that so always make sure the project that you mention on your as part of your portfolio should be practical it should help the organization it should be aligned with the domain that you want to get into it so that way you when you appear for an interview or even if they want to shortlist you they have a sense okay you know what i am actually trying to fill in somebody for my customer support team so somebody has done customer support analysis so that would help me let's say i want to fill fill in fill somebody for marketing analytics so somebody has done lead prediction somebody has done customer lifetime value prediction so now that is going to help me so always analyze what is the domain what is the industry demanding that is something that quite uh, like if you do not have any clue about how to find it out let me know i can make a separate video on it but the point is mention projects that are practical not completely impractical and and everybody knows if you have predicted stock market you would be almost the richest person you know elon musk there is a person that is going to chase you because you can literally predict stock market which does not happen every stock market prediction that happens like even on kaggle there is a there, there was a competition sometime back uh, that that was um, i think sponsored by two sigma it was using news articles to predict stock market so it was a very big project so even that sort of project like you know the best of best machine learning engineers actually work on that project machine learning researchers work on it i don't know if you have heard about numeri ai so that is like kaggle but for uh, you put real money and then try to predict stock market so this is a big domain don't don't mention it as a portfolio project on your re- resume or website finally the fifth one that i wanted to highlight is a lot of people do this mistake when they mention a project they just describe the technicality of it it depends on the kind of role you apply if you are going to apply truly for a machine learning engineer role then the way you describe the technicality of the project should be different from the way you are going to explain for a data science role so keep in mind that we have already discussed about roles in the previous uh, one of the previous videos that i did so if you are going to apply for a pure mle machine learning engineer role the way you should describe that project should be the kind of technical challenges that you had to overcome the kind of technical value that it adds kind of algorithm you used kind of innovation that you brought to that project this is what you have to mention if it is an mle machine learning engineer role if it is a data science project now you have to describe the kind of value this project can bring for the organization the kind of innovation you have brought in there how what did you actually get out of it so in both the cases you need to talk about the challenges you need to talk about the impact you need to talk about uh, the kind of business value that it can bring even if you you know it's a hobby project right of course it's not bringing any big business value but still you can talk about these aspects now that is going to give the recruiter or um, somebody who is going to go through your profile a good impression that you are not just thinking about a small cubicle that you might sit but you are actually taking a broader look you are taking a bird's eye view of the project then trying to understand from what this project is going to do for the organization not just you know your tiny part because that's that's how companies work right you are you are so tiny in an organization um, i mean like not everybody is elon musk to talk about tesla ai uh, batteries engine rocket fuel i mean we are not in that business we are we are going to be in an organization playing a very smaller role so companies appreciate people who can actually understand values companies appreciate people who can talk about business impact and business um, uh, what kind of value business value it can bring so it is very important whenever you are going to describe your pro- first describe your project don't just mention one line that you know what i did um, um, amazon reviews analysis you know i used nlp so it doesn't help always describe your project when you describe your project depending upon the role that you apply if it is mle to get into the technical details we'll talk about the challenges talk about how you solve the problem if it is um, um, data science role then talk about relevant values business impact that it can bring kind of challenges that you overcame you if you had any innovation and um, if 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 you know it is like state of the art solution so you can talk about this so basically just don't talk about project simply talk about the overall uh, overall impact the values that you have and also just just cover entire thing like a small description 
So totally, we have discussed five data science portfolio things that I believe that you are doing it wrong. Starting from we had Titanic data set, do not mention Titanic data set. Second, do, if you are going to mention a GitHub repo, prof, GitHub repo, make sure that the GitHub repo is sane, like it has got required details, good coding practices. Third, just do not mention the concept or task name. Don't mention NLP, don't mention um, data visualization as the title. It could be part of the title, but it is not the only thing that you have to say, oh, my project is NLP, you know, it doesn't help anybody. Fourth one, do not mention projects that are completely impractical. The biggest example is stock market prediction. <laughs> you could have been rich doing stock market prediction. You don't need to apply for this role. Finally, when you talk about projects, talk about the values, talk about the impact, talk about the technical challenges, talk about how you overcame it. Not just, not just you know, I use random forest and got 90% accuracy. Doesn't help a lot of people. Some people could be inter interested in this stuff as well. But um, it's usually good if you talk about the technical details, why you did something, how you overcame it, what kind of impact it could have. And I think uh, I think if you fix, I have seen this a lot, especially beginners. If you fix these things, I think your portfolio could be more interesting than how it was before. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Let me know if this kind of video is helpful to you. Um, this is me not coding, but actually talking about my experience of whenever we have recruited candidates and whenever we have gone through resumes, um, whenever we have done mentoring. So if you are, if you are interested in this, this type of content as well, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I hope you stay safe. I hope you take care of yourself. Happy coding. Peace.